This week's AFL action sees a couple of teams taking each other on in what could be cementing positions in the top eight. Will West Coast still continue their form? Will Richmond still remain on top of the ladder? Can Carlton pick up their first win of the 2018 season? All this and more discussed in the upcoming installment of AFL 2018 season predictions, teams and tips. Zero. What's going on, God Zero Nation? This is our God Zero, back with another installment of AFL Teams and Tips, looking at Round 8 AFL action this weekend. But before we start, thank you so much for all your love and support on this series thus far. It's going great, better than I expected. Cannot thank you guys enough for the support. Welcome aboard to all new God Zero Nation members that have subscribed since the last installment. Thank you so much for pledging your allegiance to our God Zero and getting on board. Appreciated more than you'll ever know. That road to 500 is looking a lot more clear with your support. However, we're turning our attention to AFL action and this weekend can see some big changes in the structure of the ladder. We could potentially have Carlton win their first game. We could see Richmond skip ahead further on top of the ladder. We're about to find out who I think is going to get the job done. Kicking off with Friday night action later on tonight, MCG Hawthorne hosting the Sydney Swans. In for Hawthorne is Will Langford and Ricky Henderson, James Warple and James Cousins both omitted from the squad. James Sicily, the hat himself, plays game 50 for the Hawks. Looking at the lineup for the Sydney Swans, Tom McCartan in on debut. Younger brother of Paddy McCartan. Let's hope he knows how to kick a goal, this kid. And Daniel Robinson in as well. Robbie Fox and Harry Marsh have both been omitted. Jake Lloyd playing game 100. And when I look at the lineups, I have to go with the Hawks in Melbourne. Last week, Sydney showed a lot up there. And... They could probably come down here and do a number on the Hawks, but I just feel Hawthorne are going into this with a stronger lineup, and I just feel they've got more scoring avenues than Sydney do, and I feel they're going to get the job done quite easily later tonight. Turning our attention to the first game Saturday, Spotless Stadium, GWS Giants hosting the West Coast Eagles, and this could be the first potential upset of the round. In for the Giants, Jeremy Cameron, Rory Lobb, and Isaac Cumming on debut. Dylan Buckley, Jonathan Patton, and Nick Shipley all omitted. Jonathan Patton is a huge out for the GWS Giants. Callan Ward plays game 200. In for the Eagles, Brandon Archie and Braden Ainsworth, both on debut for the club. Fraser McInnes comes in to cover Nick Natanui, who's out on suspension. Luke Shuey and Jack Petrusel, both out injured. And I feel GWS could potentially get the job done. I'm going to back GWS at Spotless, and I hate to do it because West Coast have been playing some solid football, but I feel losing Luke Shuey and Nick Natanui and having Fraser McInnes have to do the ruck load on his own. Obviously, Scott Lysette's going to help him. But Rory Lobb in the ruck, he's going to be very, very dominant. Jeremy Cameron up forward, he's going to have a big game as well. And even though they've still got some big outs, I'm going to back the Giants to knock the Eagles off and stop a little bit of momentum. That's a big call, and some of you might not agree with me. But the Giants at spotless four, good zero. Heading over to the MCG, Carlton hosting Essendon. In for Carlton, Darcy Lang on debut for Carlton, best known for playing for Geelong. Charlie Curnow and Jed Lamb both in as well. Levi Casbolt out injured with Andrew Phillips and Matthew Kennedy both omitted. In for Essendon, Orazio Fantasia as well as Sean McKernan. Andrew McGrath out injured, Joe Danaher out injured. Orazio Fantasia playing game 50, Tom Bell Chambers plays game 100. 
And I feel those milestones are going to be ruined because I am tipping Carlton to win their first game of the season. They showed a lot against Adelaide last week. And I think when you throw Charlie Curnow into that lineup, he's just going to add a little bit more depth. And I think losing Joe Hedanaher and Andrew McGrath takes away some avenues out of that lineup. So I'm back in Carlton to get the job done here. A lot of you will probably tip Essendon. I don't blame you for tipping Essendon. But Essendon have been on the decline, where Carlton have shown a lot of improvements. So I am backing the Blues, and I know there's going to be a lot of God Zero Nation members happy that I'm backing the Blues this week. And I do sincerely hope they get up and win their first game, because they have showed a lot of fight over the last couple of weeks, and I think they deserve to get a win on the board. Heading over to the Gabba, Gold Coast Suns hosting the Melbourne Demons in for the Gold Coast. Stephen May, Aaron Hall, and Jack Leslie. Max Spencer has been omitted. Jesse Joyce and Matt Rosa out injured. For Melbourne, Christian Salem comes in to replace Jaden Hunt. And Melbourne, they're going to get the job quite easily done over there. I feel, even though with Stephen May and Aaron Hall both coming in and bolstering that Gold Coast lineup, I think Melbourne's momentum at the moment running a little bit too hot. Clayton Oliver's going to have a field day. Max Gorn is going to be absolutely dominant in the ruck all day. Jesse Hogan's probably going to go back and kick five goals. And they're going to have a very comfortable win over at the Gabba. We head over to Adelaide Oval. Port Adelaide versus the Adelaide Crows in the Adelaide Showdown. In for Port Power. Tom Cleary, Chad Wingard, Tom Rockcliffe and Sam Powell Pepper. Out is Dom Barry, Carl Amon and Jasper Pittard all omitted and Aidan Johnson out injured as well. In for the Adelaide Crows is Miles Polhoek and Taylor Walker with Wayne Malira injured, Darcy Fogarty unlucky again dumped for the captain. I was originally going to back Adelaide but now that I look at the lineup and I turn around and I said a couple of weeks ago you've got to be careful when backing Port Adelaide this year. I'm going to back Port Adelaide to get the job done. Chad Wingard, Rockcliffe, Powell Pepper all back into that lineup. That's some serious midfield strength. Wingard could go bananas up forward as well. And I'm probably picking Port Adelaide because I'm not really a fan of the Adelaide Crows. So I'm going to back Port Adelaide to get the job done. I just feel, even though Adelaide's running with a lot more momentum, I think Port Adelaide has the ability to shut that momentum down. Heading over to Optus Stadium. Fremantle Dockers hosting St. Kilda. In for Fremantle. Michael Johnson and Daniel Pierce with Nathan Win Wilson out injured. I was going to say Winston. It's Wilson. And Ethan Hughes has been omitted. St. Kilda has Blake Akers and Ed Phillips in with Paddy McCartan and Ben Long both out injured. Ed Phillips on debut for the Saints. And Fremantle's going to get the job done pretty easily here. They're going to look to answer that demoralizing loss to the Richmond Tigers last week and I feel at home they'll comfortably get the job done St Kilda could upset here this could be another upset where St Kilda finally gets a win on the board but I feel with the work rate that Fremantle had last week even though they were absolutely dominated Fremantle should get the chocolates for that one and continue getting back on track to getting a little bit of form the final game for Saturday rounds out at Etihad Stadium with the Western Bulldogs hosting the Brisbane Lions Marcus Bontempelli and Lucas Webb in for the Bulldogs with Lin Jong and Tim English both omitted. Nick Robertson back in for Brisbane. Jacob Allison has been omitted. And I think the Bulldogs get the job done at Eddie Had. However, after what I saw last week against Collingwood, Brisbane could come down here and roll the Bulldogs in a big way. I wouldn't be upset if Brisbane actually did that, even though it would screw my tip. It'd be good to see the Brisbane boys get a win, especially with the effort they put on last week. It was heartbreaking to see them lose in the dying moments of that game, so it'd be just reward to see them come here and get a decent win. But I'm still back in the doggies to get it done at Etihad. Two games to round out round eight on Sunday. Heading over to Etihad Stadium, I will be there myself. So if you're going to attend and you're listening to this, be sure to come look for me, because I'll be there. North Melbourne hosting Richmond Tigers in for North. And now this is an extended bench, so there could be a couple of ins off this list, so bear with me. 
Jared Waite, Majak Dor, Nathan Hrovat, Luke Davies Uniak, and Paul Ahern for debut, all named for North. Ed Vickers Willis out injured. I would probably hazard to guess maybe Jared Waite comes in for Ed Vickers Willis, but there could be some more changes, as I just said. At Tigerland, we have some big names named here for the Inns. Trent Cotchin, Brandon Ellis, Anthony Miles, Ivan Soldo, and Ryan Garthwaite on debut. All named as Inns. Dion Prestia out with that lower calf injury. Trent Cotchin automatically comes in for Dion Prestia. That's pretty clean cut. I would hazard to guess Brandon Ellis, if he's named, he might come in and give somebody in the back line a bit of a rest. And it'd be good to see Ryan Garthwaite get a bit of a run, especially with Damian Hardwick giving opportunity to some of the younger kids this season, which has been great to see. You know I'm going to back Richmond. And, okay, half of it is because I'm a, you know, one-eyed Richmond supporter, bleed yellow and black, but you can't argue the form Richmond are running with, especially that last quarter dominance. We could see a big upset here, but North Melbourne, on their given day, they could rock up, they could upset the apple cart, and they could knock Richmond off here. They did it against Sydney last week. So it'd be a good game. As I said, I'll be there. I'll be hitting up that Instagram. So you keep an eye out for your boy if you're there. Come say hi. But rounding out action for round eight. Collingwood hosting Geelong at the MCG. No outs listed for Collingwood as yet. But Callum Brown, Josh Dacos, Alex Fasolo and Daniel Wells all named as in for Geelong. Harry Taylor, Zach Smith, Gary Ablett, Wiley Buzzer, George Holland Smith, and James Parsons all named as in, with Lockie Fogarty out for being managed, and Tom Hawkins serving a suspension for touching an umpire's hand. George Holland Smith, if he is selected, plays game 50. I feel. definitely feel Gary Ablett gets a run this week, and maybe Harry Taylor, but those are just speculative picks. But I'm backing Geelong to get the job done. You can't argue the form they ran with against GWS last week. And even though Collingwood were very impressive up at the Gabba, you can't back against Geelong. Geelong are just going to be, I think, unbeatable around most packs during the game and comfortably get the job done to round out round eight action. So just to recap my picks for those listening at home, I'm backing Hawthorne. GWS, Carlton, Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Fremantle, the Bulldogs, Richmond, and Geelong. And something I haven't done in a little while, I've got an updated tally for the guys who have been voting in the comment section down below. Some of you might not want to get involved because you think, you know, people have a seven round advantage ahead of you guys. But if they miss some tips, you could catch up. However, we have... Five subscribers actively voting every week, whether it be in the comment section down below or on Twitter or Facebook. And I've got to update Tally for you guys right now to see if anybody is currently beating me for the prize at the end of the year. I'm still not going to reveal what that prize is, still a little bit early. But to kick things off, down the bottom. Not that far behind, there's still potential for this guy to get back up, but subscriber Sam Martin currently sitting on 26 votes after seven rounds. Next in line is my younger brother, Corn Chips. He is on 27 votes. Zeta Gaming is sitting on 29 votes. Jason Gannon sitting on 33. In second place, sitting on 36 votes, is Cripple Plays and your boy Argodzira He's sitting on top of the ladder, 41 votes. Five votes up my sleeve. Very happy about that. And that's even coming off the back of Zeta Gaming having a perfect tipping round in round six, tipping nine when I only tipped the five. So just lucky to get a little bit back because I had a good round of voting last round. That's how the ladder sits so far for the voting. As I said, get your votes in the comment section down below. If you want to be actively part of this little competition we've got going, even if you feel you're a little bit behind the eight ball and you haven't voted yet, still do it for a bit of fun. Get involved. It's a good way for myself to interact with you guys. And at the end of the competition, I get to give a reward out to you guys as well. It's something I'm going to be looking at doing every year moving forward. 
so get excited for that. But that wraps up round 8 action and that rounds out this installment of AFL 2018 season predictions, teams and tips. Thank you for joining me as always guys. If you do like what I'm doing with this series, be sure to smash that thumbs up button down below and show your support. Get on board the God Zero Nation if you haven't already by hitting that subscribe button. We are growing each and every day thanks to your support guys. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hit that notification bell before you leave, so every time a podcast, live stream, or gameplay series gets uploaded to the channel, you're notified straight away. My social media links down below, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you can hit me up on all of those, and please do so, because I love talking to you all. But that's it from me, guys. I'm out of here. Good luck to your teams this weekend, and as always, I will catch you guys next time. Hey!